Hello, sweet soul. Welcome back. <laughs> we are in a new month. We have a new topic. This month is all about connecting with nature. How do we connect? How do we ground? How do we uh, draw from it? How we do we get insights? What do we learn? How do we be in sync with the rhythm of nature? So today, first piece, connecting and grounding. Ah, you can see and maybe hear in the background, like I am in a little forest right now. Also still, you know, just at the edge of the city. So maybe you hear some of the construction site noise going on in front of my window, actually. <laughs> that still resonates out to here, but here, this beautiful piece of nature, I am very blessed to live within five minutes of walking distance to this and that's where I go ground most days even if it's just for five minutes it feels like it makes such a big difference now come into the present moment with me for just one deep breath exhale relax you just notice how there were things tense in your body that you weren't aware of before? Me too. <laughs> so the first big thing for me when I go out into nature, if that's at all possible, if it's not freezing, freezing temperatures, is I like to take off my shoes. I would like to be barefoot. That way I can feel the ground. That way my magnetic field, the electromagnetic field of my body really connects to what is below. We have charged ions, I think the positively charged ones and our uh, nature, the negatively charged ones. And so it balances, like we get to literally ground electromagnetically. Isn't that fascinating? Like that's proven by science and I am blown away by science now being able to explain to us what the old tribes have known for so many thousands of years. That it's good to walk with your bare feet on the ground. And maybe it's also something that you knew as a child before you were taught to put on shoes. I remember my mom used to say to me that um, I can only walk barefoot in the months that do not have an R in their name. I grew up in Germany and so um, I then started joking around with her by just leaving out all, all the R's. For example, it's not, it's not April with an R in there, no, it's April. <laughs> so I, I can take my shoes off. <laughs> right now, we're golden because it's me. There's definitely no R in there. No cold feet, even if it rains. Or maybe cold feet for a minute, but I'll warm them back up. So first piece, get out into nature and if possible, take off your shoes. If you don't feel comfortable walking around barefoot for a long time, just take off your shoes in a spot that feels nice. Maybe there's some moss, maybe there's grass, maybe there's dry leaves, right, like right here. And then just feel what that does to your energy. How when you take a deep breath here and then relax, you can just let everything that doesn't serve you any longer sink into the ground. And with your inhales, you can pull up some new energy. And exhale, let go of everything that doesn't serve. Inhale, pull up new energy. Exhale, let go of what doesn't serve. Good. That's your first piece, very literally grounding. Second piece, if that feels like it's not connected enough, you can go connect with a tree or with a rock. 
or with the water. So the more immersive this can get, like bare feet on the ground or a hand on the bark of a tree, that may be your minimum connection. We have a lot less touch in our society now than we used to have. We have a lot less haptic experiences. And so the more physical your experience with nature can be, the more connected you'll feel. Maybe just remember back as a child, you used to love rolling around in the dirt. I don't want to extrapolate from my experience to yours. I used to love rolling around in the dirt. And it didn't matter when we came home all dirty. Like, we didn't care. Of course, then we'd get stuck in a bath, and that's good. So, really feeling with all our senses. Touching. Smelling. How much more connection can you get out of that? Like just following the structure of those beautiful leaves. Just really perceiving it in my fingertips. How beautiful is that? It's gorgeous forms everywhere around us. And maybe for you that connection is at the ocean instead, or at a body of water. Maybe it is your backyard if you have one. I currently don't have one, so I go over here into the park because that's the closest piece of nature that I have. Maybe you live close to a body of water and you can go to a little lake, to a little river, or even to the ocean. Dig your feet into the ground of Whatever there is, whether it's muddy soil or sand, maybe you get to balance across the rocks. Maybe you do have rocks close by, either a mountain or just a hillside, some rocky grounds. And leaning against a big rock on the earth can also be a beautiful way of grounding. And then one of my favorite features around here are the trees. So I go connect with a tree, like this one, all in the vines, and I go, I put my hand on it, and I just spend a few minutes there. If you'd like to know more about that, go watch my video, How to Connect with a Tree. And then the third piece is when we feel a little bit out of things, when we need either some more grounding or some more inspiration, we can look at the landscape of what's around us. So the reason why people are looking for inside tend to be drawn to hilltops and mountaintops to meditate. All the old yogic uh, rishis, the, the sages, they would like go to a mountain cave to go and meditate. It's because that natural structure, the natural energy flow in those um, in those spots, it's very conducive to that task. Because if you sit on something that is elevated, have you ever walked up a mountain or a hill and then noticed how it just seemed like all the problems were fading away? Whatever you were struggling with down there in the valley, it just seemed a little less heavy when you were up there because you were connected to nature and because of that energy flow of you being on top of the world and everything else being below and all of a sudden realizing, oh, maybe that's not so big. Maybe I can take a step back and take a breather. So same for when you wanna ground and connect in nature and you seek some inspiration, find the spot that is good for you. So when I walked in here this morning, I saw this little cave-like place with the big rock behind me and then like a little like a little sacred nest and so that felt like an energetically good place for me to ground and connect and then to record this for you so Seeking some grounding, turning inward, reflecting. You may seek something out that is a little valley or that is a little cave-like structure 
or where you can sit surrounded by some trees and rocks. If you seek inspiration, maybe you go up on a hillside where everything is expansive around you, where you have a big view, where you can just allow yourself to be pulled up energetically towards the inspiration of the skies. So those three pieces. First one, get yourself into nature, put your bare feet on the ground for some earthing, for connecting your electromagnetic field with the one of the earth. Second piece, connect deeper with whatever that piece of nature is, whether it's the forest, whether it's a grassy area, flowers or trees, whether it's a body of water, some sand, some soil, some rocks, any of that. Third piece, if you seek more inspiration or more grounding, find that accordingly either in something that feels like a little protected space where you can turn inward and reflect or find something that is elevated that makes you feel expansive and that way you can dip into that more deeply. Do you see the crow flying in the back? <laughs> that way you can dip into it more deeply in your meditation or in your contemplation or in just sitting and journaling. I hope this has served you. Leave me some comments and some likes. I love hearing from you. And I wish you a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day. Find us on Inside Timer if you want some guided meditations with us about how to connect with nature. Sending you much love. Talk to you soon.